that. All right, so our final finalist um, is Angelique Clark. She is a recent graduate from the University of Nevada, Las Vegas with a degree in journalism. And she is a former uh, she's a former student who's been involved in many SFLA leadership programs. This last year, she did the Students for Life Action Captains program. So she was involved in a lot of our political activism opportunities. Um, she has an innovative idea on how to use her hand-painted pro-life apparel to help activists create sustainable, culture-changing movements internationally. Her activism began in high school when she had to file a lawsuit against her school to start her pro-life club. Her activism began in high school when she had to file a lawsuit against her, high or against her school for denying her free speech right to start a pro-life group. She has since de dedicated her life to abolishing abortion and has been actively involved in the movement by painting, speaking, and advocating for life all over the world. Please welcome Angelique. Thank you. Hello everyone, my name is, like she said, Angelique, and this is Life Dress. So Life Dress is a hand-painted pro-life apparel brand to start conversations about abortion in a unique and creative way. So I started Life Dress three years ago with the idea to basically create something that no one else is doing, where we can start conversations in a unique way with what we wear. Um, so the first dress I painted was for a pregnancy center gala that I went to. And then the second dress I painted was for actually a Students for Life gala in Denver, where uh, Kristen actually was interested in getting a dress. I painted her, painted her one for a New York City gala. And from there, after she wore it on stage, people's interest just snowballed. I'm an and influencer. I what can she, I say? Kristen is an influencer, honestly. From there, it just snowballed. And people were so interested in this idea that I realized people started asking me, do you have a website? Do you have a business card? And I was like, oh, like I was just painting a dress. But now this is a mission that I can, can build off of. Um, so Life Dress is encompassing a much larger issue, of course. So the larger issue is the fact that we want to abolish abortion across the world. There are over 125,000 abortions performed worldwide every single day. So this is a global issue. And this needs a universal solution, a solution that can work in every single culture across every single country. And I believe that a universal solution is art. Because ultimately, when words fail, art speaks. We can realize that no matter where we go in the world, we can show someone a picture of a fetus, we can show someone a picture of a mother and her child, and they know that means life, that we should value and protect and love all human life. So what makes Life Dress different? Well, Life Dress is, everything in Life Dress is hand-painted, it's thrifted, it's one of a kind, just like every single human life. And the idea behind the idea of thrifted clothes is something I call the human rights injustice trifecta. This is simply fast fashion leading into human trafficking and that, that's linked to the abortion industry. So by using thrifted items for life dress, I'm raising awareness against fast fashion and these connections to human trafficking in the abortion industry. So every life dress tells a story. So these are just some examples of people who have purchased life dress in the past and worn their life dress item out in the world to start conversations about abortion. One example up on the top is Alicia. She purchased this dress and actually wore it to the Berlin March for Life in Germany. So as you can see, life dress has plans and has gone across the globe. Over 600 life dresses um, have been painted, sold, and ha have the opportunity to reach thousands of people and start thousands of conversations. And every message on these life dresses is different. So my goal with life dress is to not just recreate the same design over and over, but to create a unique design on every dress, just like every human life. So it encompasses every aspect of the pro-life movement, whether it's about supporting pregnant um, women who are facing unplanned pregnancy, or if it's about just reaching people about how we should value human life from the very beginning. Um, in addition to all of these amazing testimonies about people wearing life dresses, it's also an amazing opportunity for post-abortive women to share their testimony. So this is Jenna. She ordered a life dress, uh, custom made, and I painted every life has a place in my heart, and it features two babies with wings to represent the two abortions that she had alongside the children that were born. And this is a powerful testimony that she can wear and walk out into the world with and start conversations and, and maybe reach a woman who maybe needs that healing from her abortion. 
So as you can see, this isn't just a clothing brand. It's a movement. It's a mission. But we can sp spread this message even further. It can go so much further than just wearing dresses and starting conversations. There's so many platforms and ways we can use art and creativity to abolish abortion. And I propose three primary outreach channels. The first one is printed t-shirts, basically taking all the unique designs from Life Dress and making them across the entire world. So there's only so many hours in a day and painting Life Dresses takes a lot of time, just being honest. So there's only so many Life Dresses I can paint and so many conversations p people can have by wearing them. So by taking all these unique designs that I've gathered over these years and putting, putting the most popular ones on t-shirts, we can take these messages and spread them across the world. The second outreach channel is pop-up shops. Um, and these will be markets and festivals and places where the pro-life presence may not exist, but we can go into them with Life Dress. And lastly, creative activism workshops. So these are going to be a unique approach to helping equip activists in all pro-life organizations with the ability to create their own sustainable, entrepreneurially minded uh, pro-life outreaches. So the first uh, channel of outreach is, like I said, um, adding uh, life dress designs onto pro-life t-shirts and bringing them across the world. So these are some examples of some of the shirts I've painted in the past. As you can see, there's a lot of different messages, taking down Planned Parenthood, time for a post-row nation, equal human rights for preborn human life. Every, everything you can imagine of a message we want to share from the pro-life movement is represented in life dress. The second outreach channel are pop-up shops. So Life Dress pop-up shops are a way to bring the pro-life message into markets and festivals that wouldn't have a pro-life presence otherwise. Um, and so these are settings like festivals and markets and handmade um, shops where we can start conversations about abortion where people may not be um, confronted with this, with, with this message. Um, so I decided to test this idea with my small scale version of the Accelerator Project and I went on winter and spring tours. So I decided that I'm going to try and see how this works in real life. So I went on a winter tour to Washington DC. The Pro-Life Summit was my first one. St. George, Utah, Berkeley, California, Oklahoma City. In the spring, I went to Las Vegas, my hometown, Henderson, Colorado Springs, and Phoenix. So these were all different demographics, different places, all these different ways that we could reach people and start conversations about abortion. So these are some pictures from that. So you can see, I pretty much just brought the message of life dress both in the physical form with this art and creativity with wearable art and with my message and asked people questions. I asked people, when should human rights begin? I asked them who deserves the right to life and had conversations with them in eight cities, thousands of interactions and hundreds of conversations. So taking this uh, idea of bringing the pro-life message with art and creativity, I want to be able to take this so much further. And so last year, I went on a mission trip, a pro-life mission trip to Uganda and Kenya. And I heard from a lot of students there that they have so many ideas and so many ways that they can reach people with the pro-life message and they can save so many different lives, but they just don't have the funding they need to do it. And through these pop-up shops that I've had and being able to generate some income with, with pro-life message and be able to start conversations with pro-life message at the same time, I realized this could be a perfect way to help pro-life organizations across the world fund their activism. Because ultimately we can't continuously, continuously fund every activist across the world with their pro-life message, but we can equip them to use creative and effective ways to sustain themselves. So this is an example of exactly what I'm talking about. So you can see a visual. So while I was on this uh, training in this camp last year in Uganda, I was teaching and training on the message of using our unique passions and gifts to further the pro-life message. And while I was doing this, I realized the students were engaged and they were interested and they were excited to share this message to their communities, but they didn't have a hands-on understanding of what I was, what I was getting at. So I had this white skirt that I'd brought with me, and I have absolutely no idea why I packed it, but it ended up becoming the start of something um, beautiful. So I decided towards the end of the camp, let's have these students paint their own life dress. So I had them um, sit down, they painted all these beautiful pro-love, pro-life messages on this skirt. And after that camp, I listed it on lifedress.org, 
It sold within a few hours, and all the money, all the proceeds from that skirt went directly back to that camp, so that those students could use that money to further their pro-life outreach. But it didn't just give them that money to start their pro-life outreach. It equipped them with those trainings and the inspiration to use their own passions and their own creativity to further their movements. So as you can see, these creative activism workshops encompass three main takeaways, creating, funding, and sustaining. So not only are these, are these activists able to create something with their own hands and use their passions that, that uh, can spread the pro-life message, but these also will go to funding their own pro-life movements. And funding is such a critical aspect of pro-life organizations across the globe because everyone has, every pro-life activist has a dream to abolish abortion and to do whatever they can to ending this, the greatest human rights injustice of our time. But oftentimes they just don't have the funding they need to do it. So the third, of course, is sustaining. Because with this information, with these resources that Life Dress can provide, they can continue to, to further their work in the, the same similar um, entrepreneurial minds, mindset and structure that Life Dress has. So what makes this project completely unique and different than any other organization out there? Well, Life Dress is going to be partnering with pro-life organizations on a global scale to help change pro-abortion culture in an innovative, sustainable, and creative way. So this isn't just Life Dress going in to all these different communities and saying, here's a, here's a resource that you can, you can use to um, you know, build your organizations. This is partnering with other people and partnering with other activists and other mindsets so we can build the best pro-life movement we can build. Because ultimately, we can do this together with your help. One life dress, one conversation, one country and community, one person at a time. Thank you. Well, thanks, Angelique. That was great. Uh, it's exciting because we have all known Angelique since she was in high school, had to sue her high school. Um, so we're very excited uh, to have you here. Um, and obviously, as the first pro-life leader to ever wear a life dress, I was very excited. Uh, but thank you for coming to the baby shark tank. Um, for the babies. Okay, so um, a couple of thoughts I had, uh, you know, we've certainly have seen, especially with our friends in Canada, the National Campus Life Network's kind of like our sister organization up there. They do not have a First Amendment uh, freedom of speech, if you will. This is really interesting to me because, you know, they are not allowed to have certain flyers on campus or even show pictures of children in the womb living um, but this would 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 something like this kind of escape some of the regulations because you're wearing your message yeah. on I definitely your see that I can see that definitely kind of passing over regulations saying this is just how I express myself yeah. you know when you talk about art it's subjective so it's my it's gender identity yeah. is pro-life yeah it's fluid mm -hmm. yes it's fluid <laughs> and my pronouns are save the baby okay no um no, I, th that was interesting to me. I guess my biggest question is, what do you see as your biggest obstacle in scaling this? Biggest obstacle I would see is probably just being able to connect with the pro-life organizations that I want to work with, which is one of the main reasons why I'm so excited to be potentially part of this uh, grant and this program, because that's the main hurdle I see, is just being able to find the people who are interested in using art and, and changing culture that way. Um, so I think that's probably one of the biggest hurdles I can imagine. Okay, so yeah, you'll need connections that we might have made and, and some an influencer. <laughs> I need your influence. Sorry. Yeah, so no, it'd be great because then you can get a lot of folks to come on board and kind of hear about Life Dress and bring this to their country. That's awesome. Have you started giving out, sorry, I have lots of questions. I can think. Uh, uh, have you started giving out like postcards or like any sort of card, so when you get your life dress, like here's your life dress, now go to your Walgreens and put this in front of Plan B, or you know, do some do kind of something activism. Else. Mm -hmm. I actually do, there's actually a card in each of your folders I provide you, so that goes with all of the life dress orders I ever send out for the past three years I've had life dress. Um, so that is just a card to talk about what life dress is, and it'll bring you to the website. Um, I recently just relaunched my website the past month, where it has way more features and the goal is to have people go to that website and it will have resources for, for people who are maybe in an unplanned pregnancy. Um, so that's definitely 
a way to yeah have outreach and have activism that way. So yeah, I encourage you. Student Strive has some great material resources. You just pass those out. Make them do some work too after they get their grant. Yeah, that's actually another aspect I was hoping to do is have some kind of activism kit, partnering with Students for Life and other organizations to send to everyone who orders a life dress. So yeah, I I could see this. Um, really having a lot of potential you know and taking off and every culture you know has so many unique ways that they approach art and conversation um and i think you know reading through everything it's been really really awesome to see and it really is you know so i, I like the wording that you use it's a spark you know it's a first encounter with maybe the pro-life message um, with somebody and it's a joyful one you know, when you see such colorful and beautiful art on somebody's apparel. And so, you know, I guess my question is, what is your strategy and your plan after um, somebody, you know, starts to wear one of your pieces and encourages their friends to? Do you have plans for, you know, follow-up trainings, um, some sort of way that you can encourage them to continue to stay active so it's not just, you know, buying your apparel, and maybe that's the case at times, um, but really just increasing awareness and the activism because I see that's definitely a part of your plan. And so I'd, I'd love to hear a little bit more about, you know, where you hope to take the training aspect and relationships with some of your approaches to other countries internationally. Right. Thank you. That's a great question. Um, that's definitely one of the biggest visions I have is being able to equip activists once they have a life dress. Because um, I definitely don't want it to just stop at, oh, you placed the order, I shipped it, bye, I'm never going to talk to you again. Like, I would love to be able to make that connection with every activist, um, which is why I'm so invested in the idea of an activism kit, where I can partner with organizations um, that, you know, are already strong in so many different ways, like, you know, training on apologetics, training on field development, how to talk to people, um, how to get mobilized in their schools, obviously Students for Life. Um, so. That's definitely something I definitely see as a vision for Life Dress is being able to part with, partner with organizations to be able to provide that training as opposed to just creating my own training from scratch and reinventing the wheel. So yeah. I love this. It's beautiful. It's been really exciting to watch this grow. Um, how do you see Life Dress being able to appeal to or reach people outside of existing like pro-life circles, pro-life movement? Do you see it reaching other audiences and if so, how? I definitely see it reaching other audiences. Um, there's so many different areas that I want to take Life Dress, whether it's through, as we were talking about earlier, influencers, um, being able to get it into like secular environments and places where the pro-life message isn't the forefront. Um, and so that's actually like the whole concept of Life Dress is being able to, yes, use those pro-life activists to, to wear the messages out in the world, but ultimately to start conversations with people who disagree and that's going to generate that conversation within those those circles and those communities that the message just wouldn't otherwise be talked about. Thank you. All right, so I have the last question, I think. Um, I love the Uganda story. That was really cool. And it just kind of hit home, like there's only one Angelique. And you, like you said earlier, there's only so many hours in a day to paint dresses. I like the idea that you said you're going to expand to doing some printed T-shirts. But um, how are you going to grow? What are you going to do when people take this idea and do it on their own? Are you thinking like in places like Uganda where you'd maybe franchise it and encourage them to like take this on? Or, or how have you thought about the fact that there's only one of you and this would be an easy idea to replicate and take and use? Yes. Um, so I mostly have thought of it in terms of encouraging these students and activists in these other countries to take their own unique passions. Um, because something I noticed a lot in Uganda was that there, a lot of the students just weren't interested in putting paint on a piece of clothing. It's like, that's not me, that's you. Um, so it's recognizing that everyone has their own unique gifts and passions. So that's why I'm not necessarily seeing Life Dress as like a franchise to have other people replicate the exact same way. It's more so about showing them, this is what I've done, and this is something that you can either do, or I can help you identify your own passions and approach it that way. So it's definitely more of like scaling it in, in their own passions, in their own ways. Are you thinking of like adding someone to help paint dresses? Like, is, like if you get a lot of orders, if this becomes something that takes off, you're not gonna be able, or 
maybe you would just do all the painting and you hire someone else to handle the other aspects or have, have just have you thought about that? I have thought about that, definitely expanding a team in some form. Um, that's always been a hurdle I've imagined, like I love to paint. I mean that's, you know, at the end of the day I love to paint pro-life um, clothes. And so if when I do expand a team, it's going to definitely look like those other areas that I'm not as, you know, that's, those are my strengths. Um, so I'll likely just continue to keep the unique boutique of life dress hand painted dresses and things you can't just print and then have the printed side to create sustainability and, you know, scalability um, and then p potentially hire or have other people become on the team with other areas. So, yeah. Thank you. Yay. <laughs> Thank you, Angelique. Um, these presentations have been amazing, and I want to thank our three finalists, Katie, Catherine, and Angelique, for coming in today and being willing to enter the baby shark tank um, and to give their presentations in front of the Students for Life directors in front of you um, to compete for up to $30,000 in grant funding to launch their accelerator project to transform the pro-life movement. Um, I think it was very special to watch Angelique present. I think we were going to grill her a little bit more than the other ladies uh, because we've known Angelique for such a long time, but to see uh, her idea start and where it has gone, it's also been really cool uh, to witness you know, the work we've done with our Pregnant on Campus initiative of now standing with you and then Catherine taking that idea and growing it and Katie taking some of the ideas from our own leadership fellowship that she's experienced and then taking that and incorporating that idea into her uh, sexual risk avoidance curriculum and, and the expansion program. So uh, it, it, it was personally, I think, very fun for all of us to watch. I noticed Angelique, even her presentation, she was counting the number of conversations and minds changed exactly what we do at Students for Life. So uh, mission achieved on metrics people uh, metrics matter if you don't measure it, it's not worth doing it so how can you get involved and how can you vote you can go to studentsforlife.org slash accelerator voting um, you can do this for the next several days you can cast your vote uh, to say who you believe should receive up to thirty thousand dollars in grant funding to this accelerator funding they'll continue to work with myself and our team at students for life as well as other mentors uh, to build out the these national pro-life organizations that we hope will come alongside Students for Life and many other pro-life organizations and help us achieve a post pro nation. So thank you all for joining us today. Uh, it's been an honor to um, be able to introduce to you the pro-life generation who will be leading us in a post pro America.